In this video, I will talk about stationarity. I will cover the following areas. First, I show you how to obtain financial data for free using Yahoo Finance. Second, um, we explore the Bitcoin market. Third, I illustrate the problems associated with non-stationary time series. Let's get right into it. Again, everything you need is on my GitHub page. Um, all the codes or the data. I also show you right now how you can obtain financial data for free. Just use your favorite um, search engine and go to Yahoo Finance. We focus here on Bitcoin. You click on historical data and you can now modify the time period. I just go for the maximum period. I stick to um, my daily frequency. Here I can just straight download into um, a CSV file. Then you head um, to the folder where you downloaded your CSV file. You um, show the path just by clicking on it. You copy paste the path. You go into starter and now I do my data import. I start with a change directory statement. So I move into the directory where I stored my data and then I use the in sheet command and I add the name of the file. I use the option clear just to be sure that I clear data in memory. So let me just now run this file and see what happens. We do a browse um, and as expected um, we have the open price, we have the daily high, the low, the close um, and then some further adjustment um, and the trading volume. The date is displayed in red color which means it's a string. We can also confirm this very quickly just using describe and you see the date variable is a string. In the previous video we talked about how to convert strings into a date variable. We now will um, use our knowledge um, again. Let's just do that. So now I generate a new variable which I call maybe date underscore variable. I use the date function and um, I refer to date because that's the variable used in the data set and then I have to provide the structure. As you can see in the data we have um, the year, we have the months and we have the day. So that will convert it into a variable and now we can modify its appearance. So I can use format. I then go into date variable and I cannot change the format percentage sign T is for, for basic time and I want to display um, on, on a daily basis because we have daily day. Good. The next thing I would do is I would declare the time dimension. So how to do it? We use T set for that and now our date variable is our time dimension. We can do a bit of a tidy up so we can drop the original date variable. We don't really need it anymore and we can uh, do a line chart just looking at maybe the daily closing prices over time. And the chart shows now the daily closing price of the Bitcoin um, to US dollar price. Um, and um, as we can see where things have changed quite a bit, in particular recently, just looking at the time series, any time series that is drifting away from a long term mean, from a long term average, would in most cases be what you call non stationary because it does not seem to have a fixed mean or a mean that is well defined. This creates issues for analyzing data. So when we go back to our deterministic model, we need some um, a well-behaved time series for it to really work. Usually after doing all the data wrangling, I would use a summarize command just to check the data again. Then I would definitely save the data um, and then we start our action analysis. So usually here what I do is I use um, the data again, so I open it again. Um, and use the clear option to clear data in memory. The reason for doing this is if I only want to try stuff in my analysis, I don't have to run the whole data stuff again. So I like to separate data wrangling um, and analysis quite often. Actually, I put this into separate do files if things get a little bit more complicated. Now the next thing is I want to focus on the trading volume because that's a little bit more interesting. Um, I start with another line chart where I look at volume um, over time. And as you can see this looks a bit different. It seems to be except from a crazy moment here, a little spike, it seems to be much more stable. Yeah, much more stable compared to what we have seen 
um, for the Bitcoin price. Quite often if you have um, such spikes you can calm them down by transforming your data and I have done a video on transformations. I suggest doing a log volume, doing a log transformation and we can just have another look at it over time and now you see actually that you have more or less two different periods. You have a period um, up to round about um, the early 2018 where there is an increase in volume and then it seems to stabilize. Now what I also tend to do um, is we can use a, a kernel density. So we look at the distribution of the trading volume log transformed and now what you see is you have not one peak you have two. Now that's already an indication that this time series is not stationary. But the issue in terms of making predictions is if your time series doesn't have a well-defined moment. So here we talk about the mean and the variance and also of course other moments. But if you don't have well-defined moments, predictions become meaningless. I show you now one way to handle it and this is using so-called first differencing. So what we do is we now look at the change in the um, volume over time, not the actual level of volume. There are two ways to do it. Um, one way is to start with your log volume minus L dot the log volume. Now this is using the so-called lag operator. Now the lag operator simply refers to the observation in the previous point in time which is the previous day. The alternative is to use the um, D dot operator directly which is exactly the same and this is the first difference operator so this is simply calculating a change in your variable. These operators only work after you T set your data which you have done here. Good and then we can do another line chart and now what you see is that once you do the first differencing it becomes pretty much stable. You have a bit of spikes here and this is um, an issue in terms of volatility modeling. We will talk about this much later in this course but in the end you tend to always go back to your long-term average. So that's all for today about stationarity. We will explore this further in future sessions.